think the story that actually rounds out the year in a way that kind of makes it more make more sense is um, I really wanted to try butt play while I was pregnant because I just wanted to just like, oh, let me just try stuff because I'm just not into it. I don't like it. Let me just see if there's things I can add into it. And there was this time that I was trying this anal vibrator and Jared and I were having some penetrative sex. And then I also had a clitoral vibrator on the front. And in order to like facilitate all of these various things, we were in the bathroom kind of positioned in the most awkward way and talking about having sex as if we were moving a piece of furniture together. All right, ready? Yeah. Turn. Okay. Turn. No, it's like I, I just don't think it's gonna fit. Oh yeah, well, come on up, 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 up. What's going on lovers and friends? Happy 2023, the Jordan year or the LeBron year, depending on where your loyalties lie. My name is Sham Boudram. I am a sex and relationship expert who has been working as a public facing educator for the past 15 plus years, since 2005. Um, that's 18 years, I think that's 15 plus. And I love what I do. I'm proud of the work that I do. And more than anything, I'm proud of this podcast that has really led to so many incredible ahas and transformations in my life. And in this episode, I wanna talk about that. So I scoured the internet for the best reflective questions to start off the new year by thinking about what you accomplished and what you learned from the past. And we're gonna go through some dramatic, revealing, vulnerable, gruesome, and exciting questions that I truly think that you should also answer as well. So I've put them down below in the show notes. These again are the most revealing and riveting questions that I could find on the internet. So without further ado, let's get into it. Lovers and friends, lovers and friends. I'ma take you on a trip, baby. I don't pretend. I said, lovers and friends. Uh, I'ma hold you down, down to the end. I said. Question number one is to me the most important question. And if you do not answer any of the rest of these, please do yourself a favor and really think about this. And this question came from the Instagram page, we are not really strangers. And that question is, who did you become in 2022? And I was in a mental gridlock trying to answer this question because on one hand, in November, I became the woman, the mother, the worker, who traveled to Colombia to work on my highest profile, most rewarding job ever in my collaborative career, uh, meaning jobs that I didn't create by myself, because I would say that the podcast is the most rewarding job in my you know, independent career through shared entertainment, myself and my husband's production company. But as a collaborator who works in other people's projects, this was definitely my greatest project, my most enriching project. And furthermore, I've gotten to a place in my career where I was not only able to take this job, but I got to bring my entire family with me for this experience and opportunity where we could continue our work um, through shared entertainment abroad, but also continue to raise our kids and be with them. And it was one of those experiences where I didn't even have the balls. I didn't even have the ovaries to dream of it before. It just felt too far-fetched that I could get to this kind of place in my life. And when I was there, I just, I, just, I literally couldn't believe my eyes, couldn't, couldn't believe my life. On the flip side, in 2022, I also became the person who got so upset, so enraged, that I chose to lock myself in a room for around 24 hours. And as a result, went to the bathroom in a house plant. And if you have followed this podcast, you are familiar with other not so glossy points, I'll just call them what they are, low points in my life that came about last year. There are so many things about my life that I don't like and have not liked for a long time and that was causing confusion for me about my intimate dynamic. Are you okay with now that we have kids that our dynamic and our love probably won't be the same? No, I wouldn't be okay. I don't know, it's such a hard, it make, it's making me wanna cry right now. I have a lot to work through in terms of managing how I'm going to make space to love and to care for and to give to a second child when space is the last thing that I have in my life right now. 2022 was a year that I spent a lot of time not enjoying being alive. I'm not saying that I was suicidal. I'm saying that my experience of living was not enjoyable. 
And I was in need. I was angry. I was depleted. I was frustrated. And not that I took it out on, but I took those feelings to a lot of my very close relationships and they were heavy and they weighed on them. And it was a very weighty year. And so when I reflect on all of that, all parts of myself and my experiences last year, and I try to answer that question, who did I become? What really comes to mind for me is that I became the kind of person who actually did self-love. It took me a little bit of time, but I actually figured out what was missing in my self-love journey. And that was standing with all parts of myself, all sides and choices of myself, all versions of myself. Doesn't mean that I don't acknowledge where I could be better or could have done better. Doesn't mean that I don't strive um, for more or that I don't repent. But it also means that I get me. I get all versions of me and I am no longer distancing myself, belittling myself, um, in some cases name calling previous versions of myself just because today I have access to do better. Because I realize that the version of myself who peed in a houseplant, although that wasn't the best decision, in all things considered, at the time, that is what I had access to. That is genuinely what I felt was the best decision for me. And so I stand with that version of myself. And I realize how much of my life I have not done that. And I've spoken about this actually. When people ask, how are you able to be so vulnerable about your experiences? And I say, oh, that's because I don't even uh, identify with older versions of myself. It feels like I'm telling someone else's story. Like, oh, like that bitch is so basic. I'm so much better and so much above her now. So I don't mind airing out her dirty laundry. No, that's me. And I thought about it in this way. We've all likely been through tough financial times before. And during those times, we make poor nutritional decisions just based on access. And if you are fortunate enough to get out of those straining financial times, you likely make better nutritional choices. And when you think back to that version of yourself who was eating ramen noodles, you don't think to that version of yourself like, oh my God, stupid, why didn't you just eat organic? You're very well aware that you were doing the best you possibly could with the resources that you had. And I take that mentality to every aspect of my life. The biggest lesson that this hard time has taught me is that your definition of self-love cannot be based on your favorite things about yourself. Because that means when you're not capable of being the best version of you, you don't have access to loving yourself because nothing that you love about yourself do you qualify for. So for example, my definition of self-love, if you were to ask me, you know, Shan, why do you love yourself? A year ago, I would have been like, I love myself because I am motivated, because I am up for the challenge. I have a lot of energy and I do what needs to get done in order to be a version of myself that I'm most proud of. Now, what happens when I don't have energy? I don't feel like trying. And so I felt like a person. And at a time when all I needed was to feel like it's okay, I understand you, I still love you, I couldn't offer that to myself. So I had to redefine self-love from what I loved most about myself to my love for my ability to be there with me despite who I am and what I currently am not. And that's who I became in 2022. The kind of person who really doesn't just talk about it, I am about it. I'm about that self-love. What was an unexpected obstacle? I could answer it the exact same way, but I think I'd like to talk about this. So towards the end of my last pregnancy, I was shooting an episode of Lovers and Friends with a guest and my brother-in-law, Cray, who works for us, came around to tell me a couple of notes. And one of the notes was, oh, that mirror that you ordered is gonna be delivered today. I said, all right, thank you. He said, when it gets delivered, I know it goes in your bedroom, where do you want me to put it? Do you want me to put it over here or by the bed? And then he made some joke, the guest laughed, he laughed, they moved on, but I got deeply humiliated. I felt really embarrassed, I felt really awkward, and I thought to myself, save this feeling for later and reflect on it. 
And so later when I reflected on like, why did that bother me so much? I realized that that was the first time in my life that I felt like people were talking about my sexuality or the prospect of me having sex in a way that you would talk to grandparents. Like, oh, in case you guys wanna get freaky later, knowing that they're probably gonna be asleep by 6 p.m. And not that that was Cray's intention or that, that that's what he was saying, but the real truth underneath that feeling was that I didn't feel sexual. I didn't feel sexy. So the thought of me having sex made me feel awkward. And the thought of other people picturing me having sex made me feel deeply humiliated. And I still am battling with that to this day. A sex expert who feels uncomfortable having sex, a concept. Let's dive into it right after this break. Happy New Year's lovers and friends. Let's talk about New Year's resolutions. And if you're anything like me, top of mind is feeling good about what you put into your body and feeling great about the time that you spend on feeding your loved ones, of course, your lovely self included in that. And if so, I wanna tell you about an incredible offer from America's number one meal kit service, HelloFresh. If you're not familiar, HelloFresh is an amazing pre-proportioned farm fresh service that I've been using since 2020. And here's how it works. You go to HelloFresh.com and then you browse over 35 different meals they have each and every week to choose from. And you pick the meals based on what matters most to you right now. Do you want to eat healthy? Do you want to eat lots of veggies? Do you want to eat delicious, diverse foods, gourmet meals? HelloFresh has you covered. So you tell HelloFresh what you feel like eating, how many folks you're feeding, and then they send directly to your doorstep pre-proportioned meal kits that you can make. And some of the meals are one pan meals that can be made in like 20 minutes or less. I've been again using it since 2020. I feel really good about feeding my family this way because not only is it delicious, it's also really simple and really quick. And for busy folks on the go, I think it's the ideal meal kit service. And if you wanna give it a try, all you have to do is go to hellofresh.com slash lovers21 and get this. With that, you can get 21 free meals in 2023 with HelloFresh. Again, go to hellofresh.com slash lovers21 and HelloFresh has an amazing offer just for our community that's gonna allow you to get 21 free meals on America's number one meal kit service. It was a pretty even mix of having extremely low sex drive during pregnancy and as a result, just being out of practice of having sex and feeling uncomfortable and foreign in my postpartum body, as well as adjusting to my new role in this world as a mother of two, that made me feel like an outsider of my own sex life. It made my sex life feel like my favorite pair of sexy pants that no longer fit or fit my vibe anymore. Instead of letting them go and giving them to somebody else to try on, I kept trying to force those pair of pants on and it made my body balloon in uncomfortable ways and fold in unflattering ways. And it reminded me that I wasn't who I used to be every time that I tried to do it. And that sucked. So I threw out those pants and started to look around to buy new ones. I invested in new ways of expressing myself sexually last year. And I'm so proud that I did that. My drive to have sex was and is extremely high. Like to this day, I wake up every morning really excited to have sex. And I love that about myself. I love that detail about my being, something that I, I, I mourned last year and I wasn't sure if it would come back and it definitely did. But with that embarrassment factor, the desire was there, but the satisfaction was not. And it's not that it's completely back. I will say there's definitely sometimes too that I find myself too in my head too much is that observer, that spectator who's judging myself rather than embracing myself in my most wild moments. But through learning about sacred sexuality and some of those practices, through having conversations with my husband, honest conversations with myself, buying new lingerie, reprioritizing what feeling good in my body looks and feels like, I feel like I'm finally starting to get back to it. I also think a major adjustment that I made in my sex life last year that has been really great is just incorporating things I love into sex that aren't necessarily sexy. Like a mini one that comes to mind is my most favorite thing in the world. If you ever meet me in person, 
put your hand up my back and rub it. Like lift my shirt up and lightly stroke my back. It'll be very weird, but I love it so much that I will let you do it. Um, I love having my back rubbed. And it wasn't until like the past couple of months that I've been like, hit it from the back and lightly stroke my back. Why not? What was the single best thing that happened in 2022? And in the most cliche way possible. And push. This is really only meaningful for people who truly followed along with my journey last year. I had so many conflicting feelings about having a second child and feelings that I, again, stand with myself for and understand a lot more fully now that I'm on the other side. And I just, it was the greatest event because it was one, the end of pregnancy, a thing that I will never do again. I have my IUD in, my husband got a vasectomy, like I'm concretely making that decision. And again, I have the access to put action behind that. And secondly, it was just the beginning of a completeness to my family. Mm, I don't want to say that. What I want to say is Zaya is a beautiful addition to my life that I'm so grateful for. I love that baby girl. She's awesome. She's super cool. She's literally a, a dream baby. She's so incredibly different from Ryu. And that's why I say I understand myself so much more because Ryu is very engaging and as a result needs a lot. She needs a lot from you, needs a lot out of you. And I think with that in mind, I didn't know how I could give the version of mothering that I need to give to Ryu to two different kids, but Zaya is a completely different kid in a way that complements the family in a very beautiful way. Question three, what was the single most challenging thing that happened last year? Getting sick, a lot. Not only was I constantly unwell, fatigued, fed up while being pregnant, Ryu started daycare and brought home every conceivable strain of disgusting, vile microorganism known to man and beyond. I had COVID, I had norovirus, I had flus, I had coughs, I had sneezes, I had all of it. And it was awful. And let me just say something. A can-do attitude can only get you so fucking far. If you don't feel well, do not feel bad about not having a lust for life. Do not feel bad about not having energy. Do not feel bad about not being productive. It is so incredibly hard to give when it is taking everything to just get out of bed in the morning. And I know that we give the messaging to sick people that a positive mindset can go a really long way, but I would have loved someone just to say, your life sucks, and if you don't feel like doing shit, I totally get it. When you're not well, it is so incredibly hard to focus on anything else. So do what you can do to feel good, to get better, Give whatever extra reserve energy you have, yes, to progress, to positivity. But if you ain't got shit that day, don't worry about it. You're doing enough just by trying to survive, which is a battle in itself. Yeah. Were you dishonest with yourself or others in 2022? I love this question. I got this from Danielle Robay, if I didn't mention that. I've got a lot of these questions from her Instagram account. I love this question because when I read it, it was an immediate... Hell fucking no. I was stupid honest last year. I was gruelingly honest last year. And although I will say going forward, now that I have the capacity to be a bit more measured, that I am less emotionally reactive, I am less neurotic this year, I could go about honesty in a better way, in a more cooperative way. But I will say I, I put it out there last year. I got into a lot of heated discussions with people sharing my truth. And again, like I said, although I am excited to learn other ways to do that, I'm also really proud of myself for 
standing by me and sticking up for me. You know when something happens and someone stands up for somebody else and you're like, man, that was really cool of that person to do that, to step in like that. I was that person for me. And it was really radical and rad. What is your most memorable story from 2022? I have a lot of memorable stories from last year that highlight different points of the year, like giving birth to my daughter with my sister in the room and my sister saying to me, imagine, because I have two girls, one day Ryu, my oldest, could be doing this with Zaya, my now youngest daughter. And that just being a beautiful moment that broke me into as somebody who was not excited for the arrival of my second kid, envisioning that in you know a couple short decades, this could be their reality and the love that I have for my sister and with my sister that this could be their you know lived experience and I could give someone that was just overwhelming to me. I could tell the story of peeing in a pot. I could tell the story of having COVID and someone breaking into my house and literally breaking down and telling that person like, you need to leave and you need to understand why I don't have the capacity to deal with this drama. Um, luckily I had COVID at a time that people were afraid of it. So they, the person who broke and entered actually backed out with that warning, but I just kept going. Like I treated that person like they were, I don't know, a therapist or the ghost of Christmas past. I was like pouring out my heart to them. I could tell that story, but I think the story that actually rounds out the year in a way that kind of makes it more, make more sense is, um, I really wanted to try butt play while I was pregnant because I just wanted to just like, uh, let me just try stuff. I'm just not into it. I don't like it. Let me just see if there's things I can add into it. And there was this time that I was trying this anal vibrator and Jared and I were having penetrative sex. And then I also had a clitoral vibrator on the front. And in order to like facilitate all of these various things, we were in the bathroom kind of positioned in the most awkward way and talking about having sex as if we were moving a piece of furniture together. All right, ready? Turn. Okay. Turn. I just don't think it's gonna fit. Oh yeah, well, come on, up, 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 up. Here we go, pivot. 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 Shut up, shut up, shut up. And it was so funny to me because I was like, man, I give myself credit for being so devoted to joy, trying everything I possibly can in the most sometimes stupid, silly, unnecessary ways, but damn it, like I really do try. And yeah, that actually kind of sums up 2022. What is something you want to be able to say you can do a year from now that you can't do yet? This is a little embarrassing to admit, what I can't do right now that I really, really want to be able to do is say, I'm going to hang out with my friend tonight. Not because I don't have the time, but because I don't really have a friend like that. I have my sister, of course, and I love my sister. I'm not discounting that relationship. I have my husband. I'm not discounting those relationships. But a genuine friend who's not related to me or doesn't have sex with me that... We just have a really great vibe and hang out and they're the release that I need. I don't really have that friend and I really would like one like that. What was the most enjoyable part of my work last year? Honestly, not in a kiss ass way. It's been you. you, need to know I love you so. Like many content creators, I make numbered goals for the year. And last year I set an intention to acquire 1 million followers on one solid platform. And I did not get close to that. As a matter of fact, towards the end of the year, I got further and further from that. My followers kept going down. And at first, I was feeling bad for myself. And then I thought, how lucky am I to really like whomever does engage with me? I cannot begin to stress enough to you in this relationship how deeply appreciative and awe in love, I am with you. I love how you communicate with me. I love how you share your thoughts with me. I love how you show up for me. And I see that in so many instances, in my DMs, in the rate and review section, when I meet some of you on the street, I'm just like, wow, what great, gracious, cool fucking people who for some strange reason choose to invest time in me. And I say that with a little bit, you know, I think, 
if you're not humbled and embarrassed by the fact that people care about you who don't know you, you're kind of weird because you could be reading the world's greatest book. You could be learning a different language at any moment in the day. The internet gives us unlimited access. And the fact that you are choosing to invest your time in me when you could be listening to Beyonce is fucking nuts. And it makes me feel very small, small in a way that you might feel when you go into the ocean. And it shouldn't make you feel small in a way that is negative, but also just like in a perspective way. Like I'm a very tiny, small, insignificant person on this planet. But the fact that I make meaning and that people make meaning out of me, I am so grateful for in light of that reality. And that's how I feel around all of you. You are like the ocean to me. And I'm like, thank you for letting me swim. It's not as bad analogy, but I just, I love you guys. I really just, I can't, I may not feel this way next year because whoever joins that changes the dynamic, but I can tell you that a shadow of a doubt this year, if you have made an effort to engage with me, I have thoroughly enjoyed it, grown from it and benefited from it, benefited from it. Thank you. What was the best way you used your time this past year? The fuck you hours between 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. at night, sometimes 12 if you're nasty. Literally the fuck you hours because that's the hours that we have sex. But Jared and I refer to them as that because it's our way of saying fuck you to life. We're tired, we're overworked, we're overwhelmed, and there is nothing more that we want to do after a busy day of nonstop to-dos than just shut down and go to sleep. But you need time to do whatever the fuck you wanna do. Sit and scroll on your phone, eat an unhealthy snack, get freaky, call a friend, watch bad TV, whatever. And almost always the next day in the morning, I think to myself, if I only went to bed when the kids went to bed, I would actually feel refreshed right now rather than exhausted. But in the next breath, I'm like, I cannot wait to get to my fuck you hours again. It's my favorite time of day. Last night, we had sex. I ate a really delicious snack. I, had a, I made a beautiful cup of tea for myself. We finished watching White Noise. When you're very busy, your fuck you hours, you don't ever finish a movie. You just start or get to the middle or the end of a movie. It takes like five sessions to actually get com through the completion. But it was amazing. And I can't wait for my fuck you hours tonight. It's my favorite time of day. Yeah, that's the best way I spent my time in 2022. What was your single biggest time waster of 2022? I'm putting this question out there for all of you and I am giving myself credit and I'm skipping it because I don't think I really wasted time last year. I did the best that I could with what I had and I stand by the way that I utilized my time last year for better or worse. What is the biggest lesson you learned in 2022? I took a course on positive psychology, which was a game changer for me at the perfect time because I took it at arguably the most miserable time in my entire life. And through that course, I didn't learn tips on how to be happier. I gave myself grace for being miserable because it is biologically and sociologically, fundamentally difficult as fuck to be happy. It is just the way that we are born, the way that we are bred, the way that we are socialized. So maybe it's not that you're miserable and ungrateful and broken, it's that you're human and you're doing your absolute best. And if you have the capacity for better, try that. And if you don't, try being cool with yourself. You're miserable, bitter, resentful, tired self. And now I'm miserable. Yes. And negative. Yes. <laughs> Emphatic yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes sense that you're miserable <laughs> and negative. If I could put it that way, it makes a hundred percent sense. What was the biggest challenge of your work last year? My biggest challenge is being with my work, being present. Oftentimes, either because my to-do list was so long or I felt mom guilt or I felt shitty, I was never really engaged with what I was doing. I was just getting through it. And I want more present work, more presentism, period. That is a challenge for most human beings. I even experienced 
this in sex. And I've talked about this before, how it's interesting that people with penises, people with vulvas have very different issues when it comes to being present. A man often has the pressure to delay orgasm and a woman often feels the pressure to have the fastest orgasm as possible. And in both those instances, you don't get to just enjoy what you're feeling. You're trying to get to a certain outcome or delay a certain outcome. That being said, in all areas of my life, especially my work, especially, especially my sex life, I really want to practice and get better at just being with it. What were the best books you read last year? I listened to a lot of audiobooks. I'm not a reader because I'm in school for my master's and have to read through that medium. So physical reading is not my place for like joy, but audiobooks became a huge component of my joy last year because as a mother, you do a lot of mundane, boring tasks. And yes, that includes playing with your kids, which can be a little dull sometimes. And having one AirPod in where I was listening to an audiobook just made a big difference. So whether I was cleaning out their diaper genie or I was cooking or hanging with them, I just needed something for me while I was pouring into other people. Audiobooks just really, just such a bright spot. And it's a hack that I'm happy to pass on to you. I listen to a lot. My definite favorite one was the Will Smith audiobook, and he's still a dream guest of mine. I want to read a few more very quickly that I loved. The Mastery of Love by Don Miguel Ruiz, game changer for me. Why Good Sex Matters, had some moments that I really, really enjoyed. Thinking Fast and Slow, had some moments I really enjoyed. A lot of other dull ones, but all in all, good learning. The Five Levels of Attachment by Don Miguel Ruiz Jr. was okay. I will say The Emotional Life of a Toddler was a very helpful book for me. Marriage Be Hard um, by Kev and Melissa on stage, who guest in this podcast, a really fun listen. Seven Secrets to Healthy, Happy Relationships by Don Miguel Ruiz Jr., who you can tell I very much enjoy. I liked a lot. I loved Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. It's just a fun listen, as well as Verity. Loved Three Women, and I'm currently re-listening to Mating in Captivity by Esther Perel. What would you do this year if you knew it could not fail? I would write my third book. And I'll leave it at that. I'll also leave you with this. Go rate and review the podcast. You thought I was going to leave you with something nice. No, I'm leaving you with a call to action. Um, another call to action is to go down to the show notes and read these questions and answer them for yourself. I actually first did this exercise mentally. You don't have to write it down. I just thought about it while I was pumping milk at four in the morning one day. And I really enjoyed the experience. And I actually had this as a verbal conversation with friends and family over dinner a couple times before I decided to write it out and podcast it for you. So however you feel most comfortable, however is most accessible for you to pontificate on these, I highly suggest that you do. And if you really don't have the time, just answer that one question of what and who did you become in 2022? I think that's really powerful. Um, yeah, and also powerful is rating and reviewing the podcast. And also really, really, really powerful is coming back next week because we're back to our regular schedule program. Nick Vial is the guest of honor and we're talking about the power of insecurities. This has been an episode of Lovers and Friends. I am your host, Sham Boudram, and you, you're incredible. Happy New Year to you. Bye. Lovers and Friends. Lovers and Friends. I'm gonna take you on a trip, baby. I don't pretend. I say, Lovers and Friends. Uh. I'm gonna hold you down, down to the end, I say. Lovers and Friends is executive produced by Shared Entertainment's Shan Boudram. It is produced by Boudram and Crazier Cruz with production support from 2S Entertainment's Adam Krasner, Isabel Gallant, and Brianna Barone. The Lovers and Friends theme song is produced by Sean Ross and performed by Jared Brady, who also does the scoring and engineering on our episodes. Lovers and Friends is powered by Audio Boom and made possible by our incredible sponsors who you can show love to by reading our show notes.